So basically the geometry has been imported and what we can do. Uh, at this moment I'm going to expand the uh, geometry tree just to show you the components of the assembly. So we are seeing the geometry for the lever, there is a geometry for the shuttle, geometry for the base and second shuttle. So because we want to perform multi-body analysis, we're supposed to always go to the properties and investigate which body type is, uh, stands for our geometry. So for the geometry which has been imported, this option has been already changed. But if, if you want to, prefer to, to perform structural simulation, default option is always flexible. So this is the first step that you're supposed to uh, remember always and uh, you, you have to change that to rigid. Of course, if your object of the analysis is the uh, rigid body uh, motion simulation. So this example will be exactly like this. Uh, I will show you how to perform rigid body simulation. There will be no flexible parts, but it's also possible in my DSNFX. But let's say it's a little bit more complex. So we have the lever, which is rigid. We have shuttle, rigid, base, it's rigid, and the second shuttle is also rigid. Um, another important thing that I forgot to tell you, all of the rigid body is supposed to have a um, material. So this is something uh, different from the structural analysis because usually material is related with the, the physical property of the element. Uh, but right now we are working with the geometries, so we have to assign this to provide the data about uh, mass and inertia, for example. So these two things are supposed to be checked, material and body type. And of course, material can be defined from the material branch, and and I hope you know this. So the second step is creating a joint. So joints can be uh, created uh, by uh, by clicking on this tab and clicking on the join command. So let's hide all the guiders, and I will start to assign some joints. So, as I said uh, during the presentation, joints are used to constrain the rel relative motion uh, of a pair of rigid bodies by, let's say, physically connecting them. So, basically what we are doing at this moment, we are creating a kinematic pairs. So, let's start from the grounded body, which is supposed to be present at every uh, mechanism. So this is why I'm checking this ground body and and I'm selecting this transitional transitional join. So basically what we're supposed to do, we have to select the face and we have to go to the parameters and define the axis. So this will be the zeta axis. Okay. So we have this. And these connections will appear under connection branch. So we have the first, uh, we have first joint and let's create the second one. So this type we'll use this type body to body and we will assign some relative constraints uh, between the rest of the body. So I will use I will use this transla translational parameter again. So I'll click on this and I'm selecting as the master. I'm selecting this face from the shuttle one. And as you see, the slave object is available right now. So 
this um, informs me that I have to select the second phase. So I'm sim simply clicking on this and I'm selecting the second phase uh, from, the, uh, from the base. And with this orientation, we see some local coordinate system um, appeared. So again, we are going to the parameter and we are selecting the axis related with this joint. So this will be X axis. And as the property, we, we don't enter anything because we want to provide free movement for that. So I'm, I'm just clicking OK and I'm selecting this. So let's click on Apply. And uh, this graphical representation of the joint has been presented in both for the both joints. And we are doing simply the same with the with the second shuttle. So let's hide the base for the moment. Let's select first phase from the second shuttle. And now we can display the the base. Oh, excuse me, because I have to repeat this. So now I have, I selected the face from the shuttle and I have to click on the slave and simply select the second face. And once again, uh, allowable uh, degree of freedom will be related on with X axis. So it's already checked. So I'm just checking this and uh, I'm simply clicking on apply. So we have three, three joints and now we are going to add some, uh, some revolute joints because we have to constrain the motion between the shuttle and, um, and the lever. So we are starting from revolute number one. So I'm selecting this joint, revolute. The joint tab is body body again. I'm clicking on the face from the shuttle. So this face will stand from the master face. And I'm simply related this movement with this face from the lever. And I'm going to click on the parameters and this revolute axis is exactly zeta, so the rotation will take place around zeta. So again, I'm clicking on OK, revolute 4, and I'm doing the same with the second with the second shuttle, and I'm creating another uh, kinomedical pair. So just to check, it's supposed to be exactly the same, so we have zeta, and we are clicking OK. So I think I made a mistake with the first uh, joint, so I will simply go to edit and I will simply use the join, not the translational constraint, probably, uh, because simply I'm not sure if, in, if it works. It's possible that if for this configuration it will work, but I think the, the join uh, is the right one. So I'm editing this and I'm clicking on OK. So all of the joint links has been created. So right now we can go uh, to assign so, uh, some uh, time motion to the, uh, to the level, but we, before that uh, it's good to go to the function and, and create some time Function. Basically, I want to assign rotation to to the second to the second joint, and uh, and my goal is to perform uh, transient multi-body and uh, simulation. So this is why uh, this time function is required. So basically, let's create this function. Uh, time one second. The duration will be one second, and the value will be six. 0.28, which means 
the this the this value ex, uh, stands for the uh, rotation that, um, provided in radians. So this is exactly two pi. Okay, so we have this. Let's click on OK, and let's simply go to the time motion and let's select the target joint. So I'm simply selecting this joint. I'm checking the rotation around uh, zeta axis, and I'm simply specifying uh, one and we will use function. So this value will be multiplied with the with the time function. So I'm clicking on OK. And and that's all. So the next step is to go to the analysis case, go to the other, and using the analysis case manager, we are going to select nonlinear explicit transient multibody simulation. So, from uh, this uh, model, you see that uh, our model consists of, uh, of undeformable parts only. So, now I'm clicking on this explicit transient, and if I go to the subcase settings, I have an access to, to set up the uh, time duration. We can specify the number of the outputs, and uh, let's click on OK and let's take a look if my model has been uh, defined properly. So let's wait a bit. This simulation don't supposed to take too much time. So as you see, it was very fast. So uh, Let's uh, play the animation to see results. So now I'm going to uh, to set up the scale. So I'm selecting real. I'm clicking on animation and let's uh, skip uh, some intervals. So let's play every second interval and let's play the animation. So you see, uh, my simulation has been performed correctly. Now we can observe uh, the motion of uh, our, uh, s s let's say, slider crank mechanism. Okay? And there is one thing that, let's say, I forgot, uh, because, as I said, we have a new feature, which is called Marker. So, basically, now I would like to back and simply show you how to assign this marker, how to, uh, how to add uh, another point for investigation. So basically, markers are created automatically at the centers uh, of gravity of your parts. But what you can do, actually, you can create much more markers at every position you want. So, for example, let's create some marker, which means, again, a local coordinate system at the following position. So I will create marker in this position, if I click Apply, we will see uh, the result. If I select this, and if I want to, let's say, create a marker at the center of this circle, I'm simply selecting this curve, and I'm clicking Apply, and as you see, I create another marker with specific orientation. So this orientation, of course, uh, this position can be uh, uh, it depends on, on the position, for example, of your geometry, but I wanted to say it can be changed every time. So basically, we have this marker, and right now, if we let's perform the same study, and let's go to the results, and we will investigate the, uh, the velocities and uh, positions during the multibody simulation. So I'm going to the results, and from this, uh, from this group, I'm selecting the transient results. So as you see, we can probe the results from the geometrical points, with edges, faces, parts, and markers. So right now, let me display the markers that I made. 
and let's uh, of course the body type supposed to be checked uh, as a rigid body because there is no flexible body in the system so let's probe our data uh, from the marker as the reference let's insert some an analysis so some results so let's select all of them so for example let's display the uh, results for the translation now we have a marker and simply let's click on the marker so as you said as you see uh, I just displayed uh, these this results in time for for the local coordinate system for the local point that I wanted so if we play the animation you will see that this uh, the vertical line will change its position uh, interactively so it's possible to study the data uh, in the same time so data can be exported to uh, to Microsoft Excel so we are able to uh, use this data for another uh, post-processing if we want to display, let's say, joint results, this is the tool that I'm showing you at this moment. So basically, we are able to display joint force and uh, joint moments. So it's up to you which kind of result we'll use. So we can display, for example, moment, uh, moment uh, along axis Y and from the step uh, this data we can simply select joints and revolutes the joints that we want to let's say investigate 